Good morning everybody, welcome to IndyCar. And it's uh, Thursday the 26th of July and I'm Gordon Ross. Uh, in today's news, we hear from various Tory MPs uh, commenting about the uh, current uh, bid by the Supreme Court to have Scotland's continuity bill declared uh, null and void by, by, by reason of the fact that they, they think that the Scottish Parliament is uh, not competent to pass such a law. Now, during this uh, lengthy process, there's a lot of legal argument going on at the moment. No, no decision has been made by the Supreme Court, but it's widely expected that they will uh, rule against Scotland and its Parliament having the right to pass such a bill. However, English uh, Tory MPs have commented this week that uh, only Westminster is a sovereign Parliament, that uh, the Scottish Parliament is not sovereign. Now this, again, uh, is a colossal mistake for any English MP to make since the, the law in Scotland is completely different and our founding constitutional document, the Declaration of Abroath of 1320, states very clearly that the people of Scotland are sovereign. Even, even you and I are actually above the Westminster Parliament, we're above the, uh, the, the Parliament in Holyrood as well, and we're even above the Queen in terms of our ability uh, to decide who runs the country and we have the right, uh, all Scots have the right to decide if they want to get rid of the leadership of their country. So whether Westminster is sovereign or not in the UK does not affect your and my uh, sovereignty as Scots voters. We have the, the right whenever we feel like exercising it to dissolve the Union, to pull out of the UK uh, and to return to being an independent nation as we always were in the previous, uh, what would it be, 600 years we were independent before the Union. So, another wrong statement from, from the Tories. They're very good at, uh, at spreading these kinds of lies, uh, especially among their own people down south. Now the second thing that I wanted to correct was another uh, Tory MP, this time arch uh, Eurosceptic and Brexit campaigner Dominic Grieve, who this week, and I think I believe last week as well, made the comment that uh, in the case of a hard Brexit with no deal, there would actually be a state of emergency in the UK. There would be food shortages, there would be, in some cases, according to other commentators, there might well be uh, civil unrest. Now, this was a comment that came from uh, if I, if I remember correctly, this came from the uh, director of Amazon in the, in the European Union. Now this is a guy who's the CEO of a transnational company and he's warning the UK that if it, if it bombs out of the European Union with no deal that there would be civil unrest within two weeks. Now both of these comments, if you take them together, are, are just opinions but they do go to show you that the the feeling, particularly among the business community and in the Tory party, is that when, and I think it's most likely to be when rather than if now, when we crash out of the European Union without a trade deal, that there will be a state of emergency declared. Now this is something I have maintained for a couple of years now, uh, as a situation that will be used by the Conservative government to suspend the devolved parliaments of uh, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland so that power can be centralised and London can take a grip of things. And we also know, from my previous broadcast, you'll know that I've, said, I've mentioned this before, that David Mundell is assembling a shadow Scottish government in Edinburgh in a separate building with his own staff ready to take over Scotland when that state of emergency is announced. So it's looking more and more dangerous um, for Scotland as a nation at the moment to remain in the UK. And with the statements that are coming out from London at the moment, and this is by people who are actually in favour of Brexit, that they are getting concerned about a state of emergency being called, I think it's becoming more and more likely now that uh, our, our normal powers in Holyrood will be suspended. After the court case uh, concludes this week, there will probably be a decision that um, either either they cannot uh, decide, in which case this business of Scotland's law, uh, this business of Scotland's um, continuity bill will remain hanging in the air. They might defer it uh, and kick it back to some other uh, high 
authority. They might even go to the House of, Com House of Commons with this. But whatever happens, it's not going to go Scotland's way, I don't believe. The, the, the way things work in England is they're trying to make sure that Scotland uh, cannot exert any control over the Brexit process, that it has no veto. Both Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are represented in this hearing at the moment in the High Court, sorry, what they're now calling the Supreme Court, but was the High Court originally. And uh, they've been putting a good case together. And the basis of the case is that Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have a right to deny a motion, to veto any motion which does not um, sustain the existing levels of devolution. In other words, if it erodes devolution and then the uh, devolved assemblies and parliaments have the right to withhold their consent. Now that may be swept aside by the British Parliament and this is why I believe the uh, state of emergency which is being bandied around at the moment and the hard no-deal Brexit which is becoming a uh, common currency in television interviews now being talked about openly as a possibility. That's why I believe this is such a dangerous situation. We're now facing uh, a state of emergency in March next year in which a parliament could be suspended, its powers could be uh, frozen, and we might be literally just shut out of the decision-making process altogether. And that would be a catastrophe for Scotland, having built a strong, stable parliament with good governance, staying within our fiscal boundaries, staying within our financial means for years on end, making surpluses every year, producing excellent trade balances, exporting overseas, a very successful mixed economy. All of that could be at risk, not only with Brexit, but with this chaotic Brexit where there is a state of emergency declared and all uh, devolved parliaments are suspended. So there's a real risk of this now and I think it's it, we must get this news out to those who are still wondering how they will vote if and when there is another independence referendum and I think that the days are shortening now, the number of days is shortening now in the, the closing window that we have now in which to have this referendum. Most now believe that the SNP will call a referendum in the autumn. And I hope actually that they call call a referendum slightly before the autumn. We need a little bit more time in which to start fighting the campaign in earnest. We've been fighting what you might call a phony war for the last few years, where we have been preparing the way for this uh, independence referendum for the last four years. But now it's coming to the point where we need to call it. Things are getting too dangerous for Scotland. It's too dangerous to stay with England in the Union, considering the, the mood music which is now coming out of the Brexit camp itself, that they are now suggesting that there should be a state of emergency on the 29th of March next year. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought today. But remember that we are sovereign, and that no matter what Westminster is, they're not sovereign over us. Remember that Scotland's uh, citizens have the right to vote themselves out of the Union at any point we like. And remember, the claim of right, that means the legal right of Scottish people to do this, was passed without any objection at Westminster when it was raised recently. So they're not contesting it. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. Bye for now.